In the world of racing pigeons, there is one question that echoes through every loft, every auction, and every conversation between fanciers. Do expensive pigeons really breed winners? It's a question charged with hope, mystery, and honestly, millions of dollars in investment. I'm Nicolas Heiselbrecht, and I sold a pigeon for 1.7 million euro. Today, a single racing pigeon can sell for the price of a luxury apartment, or, in extraordinary cases, more than a mansion. Names like Armando and New Kim have become legends not only for their speed and dominance, but for the jaw-dropping numbers attached to them. Armando sold for $1.4 million. New Kim shattered the world record at nearly $1.9 million. These birds represent the Mount Everest of genetic potential, but the truth most people never hear is this. Genetic potential is not genetic certainty. The idea that a high-priced bird automatically produces a dynasty is one of the greatest misconceptions in the sport. And, you know, the reality behind it is far more fascinating and far more complex than many imagine. So in this video, we're going to break down the real science, the real risks, and the real strategy behind high-value pigeon breeding. Because the purpose of buying an elite bird is not to buy victory, it's to buy probability. But probability, as we'll see, comes with volatility. To understand why expensive birds don't automatically breed champions, we need to understand why they're expensive in the first place. The modern racing pigeon market is no longer a local agricultural niche. It's a global arena where wealthy syndicates, investors, and elite competitors drive prices into the stratosphere. And the truth is this, the price of a pigeon is often shaped more by market forces than biological ones. You're paying for scarcity, for pedigree reputation, for proven racing performance, for status symbolism, and for the intense competition among buyers, especially in regions where owning top pigeons is a mark of prestige. In many cases, the bird becomes a trophy as much as a brood parent. But here's the first hard truth. The market price of a pigeon reflects bidding wars, not guaranteed breeding value. Now, let's talk genetics. Why doesn't an elite pigeon automatically create elite children? Because racing performance is polygenic, controlled not by one gene, not by ten, but by hundreds. Sprint speed, distance endurance, orientation, navigation, feather structure, metabolic efficiency. Each is governed by many interacting alleles scattered across the genome. When you breed two champions, you are not combining two simple gene sets. You are rolling a genetic dice with dozens of variables, each producing endless combinations. And the biological law that governs this is unavoidable. Offspring regress toward the mean. Even the best parents only produce a small fraction of elite offspring. Most fall somewhere in the middle. Only 10 to 30% of offspring from elite pairings ever show top potential. And this is normal, even in the most prestigious lofts, even with the most expensive pedigrees on earth. So, what does a high price truly buy? It buys a higher probability of accessing elite alleles. It does not buy the guarantee that these alleles align perfectly in any particular chick. And this is why the greatest breeders in history don't judge a bird by its race results. They judge it by its progeny performance. A champion racer is not always a champion breeder, and sometimes, a mediocre racer becomes the foundation of a dynasty. Genetics is advancing, and today we have molecular markers that help predict potential. The CRY1 gene, strongly linked with navigation and short-distance performance. The MSTN gene, tied to muscle development and distance endurance. Genes like LDHA, CASC, and GSR, connected to stamina, orientation, and oxidative resilience, but even genetic markers only offer probability, not certainty. A perfect genotype does not guarantee a perfect offspring, and a champion phenotype, the bird you see winning races, often reflects an interaction between genetics and environment. In other words, you cannot buy a champion, you can only buy the chance to breed one. Now let's explore why expensive birds still fail as breeders. First, hybrid vigor. When you outcross two unrelated elite lines, you often get a spectacular F1 generation. These birds are fast, strong, and exceptionally competitive. But the F2 generation, unstable, inconsistent, often disappointing, hybrid vigor creates great racers, but terrible breeders. Second, the sibling paradox. Two full siblings can have completely different breeding value. One may produce champions, the other produces nothing. This is why even million-dollar birds require years of testing, and why mediocre racers sometimes become legendary breeders. 
Winning lofts do not rely on luck, they rely on systems. Line breeding stabilizes traits, increases predictability, and builds long-term consistency. Strategic outcrossing adds new traits or boosts performance but must be used sparingly. The Van He method remains a blueprint. One, targeted cross, identify the best offspring, then reinforce that offspring back into the line until the gene pool stabilizes at an ideal balance, often around three quarters foundation, one quarter outcrop. And above all progeny testing, a bird is judged not by price, not by pedigree, but by what its children achieve. Breeding is not about who the parents are, it's about what the children become, Elite birds are fragile assets. They require calm acclimatization, stress mitigation, perfect loft hygiene, superior nutrition, and a handler who understands their psychology. Otherwise, even the best genetics collapse. And that brings us to the true secret. Management multiplies genetics. Elite genetics equal potential. Elite management equals realization. A bird with good genes and a great handler can outperform a bird with great genes and a poor handler. This is why master breeders consistently beat wealthy investors. They know how to create an environment where genetic potential can actually express itself. Routine, feeding, lighting, cleanliness, training rhythm, vaccination programs, this is where champions are built. No bird, no matter how expensive, can overcome poor care. If you're considering high-value stock, here is what true experts evaluate. Pedigree depth, progeny performance, genetic compatibility, physical conformation, DNA verification, genotype profiling, stress tolerance, and contractual protection. Buying elite stock is not a gamble, uh, it's, it's a professional decision that requires science, structure, and safeguards. So, do expensive pigeons always breed winners? No, they do not, and they never have. A high price is a reflection of rarity, reputation, and market demand. It is not a guarantee of breeding success. Expensive pigeons offer elite genetic potential, a higher probability, not certainty, and a valuable starting point, not an instant dynasty. True success comes from what you build on top of that, from selection, testing, strategy, discipline, and world-class husbandry. You don't buy a dynasty, you build one, and if you build it right, the winners you produce will eventually outshine the ones you bought. First on our list is New Kim, a Belgian pigeon from the renowned Armando Loft. In 2020, New Kim set a record by selling for an astounding 1.6 million euros or about 1.9 million dollars USD on the Peeper auction site. A wealthy Chinese pigeon racing fan put down a record price of 1.6 million euros or 1.9 million dollars for the bird on Sunday. The final bid left the previous record that Belgian bred Armando fetched uh, last year well behind by 350,000 euros. Her exceptional pedigree and potential as a breeder captured global interest. The Hock van der Woever auction itself brought in an astonishing 9.55 million euros, surpassing the previous record set by Gabby van der Nabeel in 2018. This marks the end of an era for the Carsberg dynasty in Belgium. But worldwide, New Kim's descendants are expected to achieve great success for years to come. China, where pigeon racing has a long history, economic development has allowed the sport to spread beyond the ultra-wealthy. Today, thousands of pigeon fanciers are pouring their time and money into breeding champion hopefuls. Pigeon racing is taking off in China. 8,000 of the birds were released into the winter sky in northern Hebei province last month, one of the many long-distance races holding out a promise of fame and fortune. Pigeons have been raised in China since at least the 1600s, but lately the ranks of hobbyists have swelled. The Chinese Pigeon Association counts around 400,000 members, dwarfing the number in Belgium, where the sport first got its start. Zhao Zhiqiang breeds and trains pigeons in a coop on his parents' roof. He looks for strong wings, a healthy constitution, and bright eyes. The eyes are the window to their souls. The brightness of their eyes shows how healthy and clever the birds are. 
China's breeders have a reputation for their passion for pigeons, but Zhao says there's a financial angle as well. If we successfully raise a good racing pigeon, it's going to be very expensive. It'll be worth a lot of money. Bids flew at a recent auction in Beijing. One pigeon, a racing champion, sold for more than $750,000. For breeders like Mr. Ying, who bought six birds at the event, money is not an obstacle. I'm in love with pigeons. That's it, in a nutshell. Pigeons come first in my heart. My wife and children are second and third. The recent surge in enthusiasm for pigeons has pushed prices higher. One breeder made headlines last month when he splashed out $1.9 million for this pigeon, named New Kim, at an auction in Belgium. Besides the cost of the birds, there's also the upkeep. One pigeon fancier in Shanghai, Mr. Yu, spends more than $30,000 a year on his flock of 500. All worth it, he says. One of his pigeons, Little Ancestor, took first place in the recent race in Hebei province. This pigeon broke the record in the national competition. It is unprecedented for a young pigeon to fly back in just one day. A feat, he said, that still brings him joy.